And let's bring in Darlene's and it works really well. It falls down. Welcome Survivor to some more 7 Days to Die Alpha 18. And today I'm going to show you a really safe base build that uses some of the powered hatches that I showcased in a previous episode. Alpha 18 has a lot of really cool things in there. I would love to see the new things in there and I hope you do as well. So do subscribe to me and hit that notification bell so you get to see all my 7 Days to Die Alpha 18 videos coming out. And of course, why not hit the like button while you're at it. So instead of uh, jumping directly to the really good base, I'm going to show you some incremental pieces in there that sort of help to clarify what I was thinking and how I was uh, approaching it. And if you just want to see the last end effect, that's all right. Just jump forward a little bit and I'll try to provide the timestamp in the description below. But otherwise, just sit back, relax, and I'll showcase a little bit of some other ways to build your bases and some thoughts that you might want to try out yourself. So the first one you have here is, it's a pillar base. So I have a solid uh, block in the middle with my, obviously my generator. I have some hatches here in order to close and open. I see that on each of the sides. And I have some one way streets here that they will walk over and jump down so they can actually come back. And uh, you see three of them here. And of course some ramps up so they can get up. The general aim was that I wanted a way where I can open and close these ones so that they have one path to get through, but that they wouldn't go to the other ones. And when they got too close, I could close it and open the other one with intention that they would then try to go around the whole way and approach the other one. And as they got closer to this one, I could close it, open this one, and uh, they would then try to continue and select a different path. So is that what happened? No, no, no. Something was seriously off. And I'll show you how that turned out. So let me make sure I close everything. So everything, oh, actually this one should be like this. And let me summon in some, let's get some cheerleaders. Uh, let's start the AI here. So she runs up here, expected, she runs over there. And I thought, oh cool, I do this, I do this. And now she will obviously run over here and, what? Why is she falling down? That's peculiar. Why is that happening? Actually, I can probably take this one out. So I was like, all right, all right, all right. Some, something went obviously wrong. Let me reset it. Let me spawn in another one because, you know, that's obviously that shouldn't be happening. So this one will go and no, it's not even trying to run up. What's happening here? All right. All right. Let's. Is it going up? Nope. She wants to go somewhere else. Well, let's try again. Let's try a biker. Come on. Are you going to come up? No, this one doesn't want to, but now this one doesn't want to again. So I thought, fine, let me get an old timer and see what happens. And he runs up there. That's expected. That's what we want. He runs over here. I close this one. I open this one. And is he going to choose a new path? And he jumps over here and he's like, nope, I'm just going to run across, even though there's no real path there. So it was really weird. I, I kept having problems with him. They would have this really peculiar way of running around where I didn't know, even know really what was happening. They would sometimes run, sometimes they wouldn't, as you can see here. But even, even when there was a path, like there's still a path here. He decided that, no, I want to get through here anyway. I really don't care. I want to get through underneath you. And here it goes up. And now he still runs, tries to run here, even though this is no longer a valid path because it's open. He can't get past here. So there was something really peculiar that was going on. Let's go to my second attempt. So I thought, fine, maybe it's too complicated. It's too far. Let's uh, just make a simple path up here. Let's have a very similar setup where I have left and right. Let's uh, do this. All right. So we have left and right. Does this work better? And this is what I found out. And Marlene. Nope. He's like, nope. Sorry. Don't care. And I thought, all right, let's get a normal zombie then. Biker. Hey, Mr. Biker. All right, okay, you're a little bit too slow. Let's get a <laughs> barrel one. All right, come on. Yep, he comes running here. Ah, he goes to the right. And I open. Is he gonna, as expected, go back? No. He decides, I'm pissed off. I really don't like that. So he doesn't recalculate and try to go around he goes like i'm pissed my path has been interrupted 
And so I'm going to go into my rage mode. And that's a change from Alpha 17. Alpha 17, they tended to recalculate and go the next path. But here, if their path is interrupted, they seem to go back to rage mode. And not just that, you saw what happened to the, let me see if the, the, the radiated one, where he decided that, hey, I don't even want to go up here. I'm going to go somewhere else and directly just attack. And that was another problem because I was not expecting that to happen. So they're still running this path, but there's obviously no way for them to get across. It's not a valid path. But they will still try, and of course they're going to fall down. Not what I was expected. And now this one is trying to go up here because there's a path on the left side, but they still go on the right side. So it's really, really peculiar. So now there's no valid path here. I mean, there is no way across because the hatches are obviously open. So I thought, fine, let me just uh, summon in a few different ones. And, you know, that, that means that they should be bashing here. No, they still keep going in this path, which is really, really odd because there's no way they, they can get across. And of course, they're going to be falling down as expected. And then they go into the rage mode. And does that always happen? No. Let's see if I can get this one. Now they seem to be going there. For whatever reason, oh, for him, I, should, I think I was too close. And now they're going in there. So now they're running this side, even though there's no way for them to get across. They're not going to jump this distance. So what is really happening? They will walk and they'll come here. They'll fall down. So now I took out the hatches. So there's no hatch here and there's no hatch here. So even though there shouldn't have been a path before, well, now they definitely want to go here. So even hatches seem to be having an issue. But it didn't give me the behavior that I was expecting. So instead I decided, hey, you know, there, there's something really weird thing going on here. They seem to be wanting to be underneath me because that's why they sometimes seem to be tending to start bashing where I was standing as opposed to going the path around. So what if I have nothing underneath me? Then that obviously is not an option for them. So they will have to path to me. And because I don't want to have to do this manually uh, opening and closing, I decided, hey, let me instead, and let me show, let me trigger this one for players as well. Let me keep it, actually, I might have to just trigger it once. Okay. Sometimes you have to trigger things once after a server restart because otherwise it might not be correct. So it's open until you get here, it'll close, you fall down, it will close. Open and close. So let me turn that off for myself. Oh, yep. And well, what happens now? The expected behavior would be that they would run, they run up, the motion sensor would see it, it would open up these hatches, they would fall down and they would repeat. But because there's nothing really here to bash, they wouldn't go into rage mode here, they would just try to path up instead. Does so that's what happened? What do you think? So what's going to happen as I bring in a cheerleader? Here we go. Now it tries to go underneath me. Can't find anything. So it decided to, so, hey, okay, fine. Let me find a path here. And now it's going a really weird thing. Let me see if I can lure it over here. It's really confused because it really wanted to be underneath me, but it can't, so it goes around. All right, can you go up there? Come on, come on. Go the right path, please, lady. All right. So now it decides that it's going to Go up, gonna come around, and now it goes back again. Uh, why is it doing that? And now it runs down. What kind of pathfinding is this? It's a really random way of doing it. All right, let's see if we can get it to come back again. Come up, come up. Yep, and it goes here, comes, hatches open, and it falls down, and it aggroes a little bit. And let's bring in Darlene's and. It works really well. It falls down. Let's follow them here as they try to run. It opens up. They fall down and they're down here. They aggro a little bit and go into their rage mode. And uh, you could prevent that if you push that out further. But eventually they will decide that, hey, I'm going to go up again. I'm going to try to run this path and it'll open. They'll fall down and that will continue because they can never reach. They do have a path. That's why they keep running up and occasionally they decide that, hey, ending light post. All right, all right, that's all right. So 
this is a way to make a really, really safe base in a pretty predictable fashion. You will see them running up, and because they can never get there, because they will continually fall down, they will then try it again. Now and then they will go for some pillars that you might have, but you know, that's a little bit of repair that is not too bad. Eventually, they then come back and resume. And effectively, it doesn't take much resources at all. You do need these powered hatches. Um, otherwise, you have to do it manually, which is a bit of a pain. You probably need to be late game of at least find the schematics. But once you do, you should be able to do something like this in your build. And of course, have a motion sensor. Now, once in a while, because of my setup here, they will actually get stuck. But, you know, this is just a test setup. And I'm sure you can think of other ingenious ways to use motion sensors and these powered hatches or maybe doors and drawbridges to accomplish something similar. So obviously, as they're running around, you would be shooting them just to whittle them down and you would be killing them. They do take a little bit of fall damage, but uh, it's not much. You do have a little bit of repairs depending on how they are bashing and where they're bashing, but that should not be too bad. Obviously, this basic setup is not going to hold up against the Blood Moon Horde very well, especially the late game one, because, well, the cops would be vomiting on me. But at least it should give you a general idea of how the mechanic works. If nothing else, it's pretty funny seeing them run around like mice and controlling where they're going. So, I hope you enjoyed this safe base guide and testing, and uh, let me know what cool and innovative ways you're using the powered hatches and other doors. Well, hope you subscribe and catch me in the next video. See you later. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.